Rules of inference are deductive arguments that are known to be valid. There are numerous rules of inference in logic, but we will only study seven of them. The first rule of inference is addition. Its form is P, therefore, P, or Q. It only has one premise. Now, since this is known to be valid, we are sure that its propositional form P implies the quantity of P or Q is a tautology. As an illustration, let's have premise number one. Francis is smart. This is our proposition P. Now, the conclusion is P or Q, which means, therefore, Francis is smart, or we add another statement. In this case, therefore, Francis is smart, or pancakes are yummy, which is our proposition Q. Now, even if our argument is senseless, in propositional logic, this is considered valid. Next rule of inference is simplification. Its form is P and Q, therefore P. Alternatively, we can use the commutativity rule of replacement to rewrite P and Q as Q and P. And then we conclude Q. So this is also simplification. Now, since this is known to be valid, this is an argument that is known to be valid, then its propositional form P and Q implies P must be a tautology. Now, as an illustration, premise one, Mark passed the board exam and Mark went to have a vacation. So P is Mark passed the board exam and Q is Mark went to have a vacation. So our conclusion must be P, which is Mark passed the board exam. So we write, therefore, Mark passed the board exam. Applying simplification in symbols, let's have the following. Give the appropriate conclusion using simplification rule. R implies S and negation of T. Here, R implies S takes the role of P in our formula. And negation of T takes the form of Q. So according to the formula, the conclusion must be P, which corresponds to R implies S. The next rule of inference is conjunction. Conjunction takes the form P as premise 1, Q as premise 2. The conclusion is P and Q. The propositional form of this argument is P and Q, close quantity, implies the conclusion, which is P and Q. You can actually verify that this propositional form is a tautology. Now, for example, premise 1, Eunice is beautiful. That's P. Premise 2, Eunice is full of elegance. That is Q. So the conclusion using conjunction is P and Q. So it must be Eunice is beautiful and Eunice is full of elegance. So that's our conclusion by conjunction. So applying conjunction in the following problem, what should be the correct conclusion? Now here, S implies T takes the form or takes the role of P. And then N or R takes the role of Q. So our conclusion would be S implies T and the quantity of N or R using conjunction. 
fourth rule is modus ponens. Its form is P implies Q as premise 1 and P as premise 2. Our conclusion is Q. The propositional form P implies Q and P implies the conclusion Q must be a tautology since modus ponens is an argument known to be valid. For example, premise 1, if Jet gets at least 60 points, that's premise P, uh, sorry, the proposition P, then Jet passes the test, which is proposition Q. So in symbols, it's P implies Q. Premise 2, Jet gets at least 60 points, which is proposition P. So from these two premises, its symbols correspond to the formula of modus ponens. So our conclusion must be Q, which represents the statement Jet passes the test. Now using modus ponens, let us identify the correct conclusion of this argument. In here, M and N takes the role of P. Negation of T takes the role of Q. So that's our first premise. And then the second premise here is M and N, which takes the role of P. So it follows the format of modus ponens. So our conclusion must be Q, which corresponds to negation of T. The next rule of inference looks like modus ponens, but this one is called modus tollens. Modus tollens format is P implies Q as first premise and negation of Q as second premise, and its conclusion is negation of P. Its propositional form is P implies Q and negation of Q implies the conclusion which is negation of P. You can actually verify that this propositional form is a tautology because modus tollens is also known to be valid. So for example, premise 1, if jet gets at least 60 points, then jet passes the test. That's our P implies Q. Premise 2, jet fails the test, which is the negation of Q. So by modus tollens, our conclusion should be the negation of P, which is jet does not get at least 60 points, or JET gets less than 60 points. Now, using modus tollens, let's identify the correct conclusion for the following argument. Now, here, M takes the form or takes the role of P, and then B and C takes the role of Q. Now, observe that the second premise in this problem is the negation of B and C, which is the negation of Q. So therefore, our conclusion by modus tollens must be negation of P. Now in this case, that should be negation of M. The next rule of inference is disjunctive syllogism. Its form is P or Q for the first premise, negation of P for the second premise, therefore Q as the conclusion. Since this is known to be valid, its propositional form, P or Q, and negation of P implies Q, must be a tautology. Now for example, premise 1, the food is tasty or the drink is cold. Food is tasty is proposition P. The drink is cold is proposition Q. Premise 2, the food is not tasty. This is negation of P. Now by disjunctive syllogism, our conclusion must be Q, which means the drink is cold. Now let us identify the correct conclusion for this particular argument. In this case, Z takes the role of P. The quantity of X implies Y takes the role of Q. 
This is the first premise. Our second premise is negation of z, which corresponds to negation of e. So by disjunctive syllogism, the conclusion should be q, which corresponds to x implies y. The last among the seven rules of inference that we will discuss is the hypothetical syllogism. Its form is P implies Q as the first premise, Q implies R as the second premise, and the conclusion is, therefore, P implies R. Since this is known to be valid, its propositional form P implies Q and Q implies R close quantity implies P implies R must be a tautology. For example, premise 1, if the food is hot, then the water is clear. This is P implies Q. Food is hot is P, water is clear is Q. Premise 2, if the water is clear, then today is sunny. Water is clear is Q, today is sunny is R. Our conclusion is, therefore, if the food is hot, then today is sunny, which is P implies R. Now let us identify the correct conclusion to the following argument. Now here, X and N takes the role of P. Negation of P takes the role of Q. For the second premise, negation of T takes the role of Q and the quantity of A or B takes the role of R. Since this follows the form of hypothetical syllogism, the conclusion must be P implies R. In this case, that should be X and N, close quantity, implies A or B, close quantity. So you have learned in this video the rules of inference, and you know that this rules of inference are known to be valid arguments. So this ends our discussion of the nature of mathematics.